We begin again today with the latest on the growing crisis over Ukraine. A flurry of diplomatic activity over the last three weeks has so far failed to resolve escalating tensions that have put Russia, the US and its NATO allies in uncharted post-Cold War territory. Today, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Kiev to meet the Ukrainian president and other top officials there as the West fears what it calls a Russian invasion is still on the car. The Secretary of State again urged Russian President Vladimir Putin to choose the path of de-escalation. Uh, we know that there are plans in place to increase that force even more on very short notice, and that gives uh, President Putin the capacity, uh, also on very short notice, uh, to take further aggressive action uh, against Ukraine. And I strongly, strongly hope that we can keep this on a diplomatic and uh, peaceful path. But ultimately, that's going to be President Putin's decision. Ukraine's President Zelensky thanks, thanked the United States for help during what he called difficult times. He also stressed the importance of U.S. military aid, especially as that buildup of Russian forces continues at the border. But Russia says the U.S. weapons deliveries are in fact themselves the cause of rising tensions over Ukraine. Uh, because I think, uh, people... This support not only speaks to our strategic plans of Ukraine joining the alliance, but more importantly to the level of our military, our military supplies. Yes, we allocate the largest amounts for the military budget since gaining independence, but we still understand that if we want dramatically fast steps in modernizing the military, we need help, especially in these tough times. Blinken's trip will also take him to Berlin for meetings with European allies, four-way talks with Britain, France and Germany. Then he'll head to Geneva for a meeting with his Russian counterpart, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Talks last week in Geneva, Brussels and Vienna failed entirely to derail the crisis. Russia continues to insist its demands must be taken seriously. They include sweeping security guarantees and a permanent ban on Ukrainian membership of NATO, something the U.S. calls a non-starter. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says that there will be no further negotiations until the West delivers written answers to Russia's demands. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron told the European Parliament that the EU must work on a new stability and security deal, one that they could then discuss with Russia. Macron says that Europeans need to rearm themselves, especially in the face of conflict on the continent's doorstep. Meanwhile, Turkey, another NATO member, is now trying to defuse the soaring tensions. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan will visit Ukraine within the next two weeks. Turkey had angered Moscow by supplying Kiev with combat drones. The Kremlin has rejected Erdogan's past offers of mediation because of those lingering tensions. With tens of thousands of Russian troops massed on the Ukrainian border, tensions between Moscow and the West have reached a post-Cold War high. For the US and its NATO and European allies, nothing less than a vast pullback of those Russian troops will suffice.